This is Twit. Kind of in the AI news, we did see the story about uh, Bloomberg announcing its own large language model. Um, and this one's interesting because uh, I feel like a lot of people don't realize, you know, Bloomberg at its core is a technology company. That's something Michael Bloomberg spent a lot of time talking about when he was mayor of New York and when I was covering startups there and uh, when I was on uh, on the team with Anthony back then. Um, Bloomberg would always talk about like, yeah, he, he's the original data guy. Um, for people who don't know, Bloomberg is more than just a news site or, you know, a, a newspaper. Uh, they are known for the Bloomberg terminals, which you know, uh, track and offer vast amounts of financial data to to investment bankers and all sorts of people. Those terminals cost tons of money to to access, and that is Bloomberg's big money. So they announced a large uh, language model, a 50 billion parameter language model that is totally tuned to uh, financial tasks. And I just, I almost feel like, man, it took them, I guess it didn't take them that long, but I felt like this was inevitable because of all companies to do this, it would be the company that's already like, made its entire existence on data. Um, any any thoughts on this and how this could change things for, for bankers or the financial you know sector? I will say that one concern I have is that what, what has been surprising to me in ter terms of this current wave of like chat GPT type um, examples and use cases is, is realizing how bad AI is at fact checking that like there are the things that I thought <laughs> would be really in my head like ai would always sound robotic but it yeah. would be like very factual and it tur that turns out to be the opposite of at least if we take you know chat gpt as sort of the the paradigm of current ai like is actually it sounds very natural but it's just full of bs and full of wrong facts now you imagine like you're somebody trying to you know trade stocks based on financial information and you're using this interface that half the time just gives you <laughs> incorrect information i feel like that could go pretty badly i mean i'm like, sure they've, they've yeah. thought this through but um it's one of those things that sounds like a good fit but like actually i i don't know that i, I i've never been a you know day trader or anything but i i would be a little bit concerned about using this too extensively right away i feel well, like here's, the, here's the difference what's up? though so mm -hmm. here's the difference in their data set okay so chat gpt i'm trying to help so many of my friends get their head around this chat gpt right now is doogie hauser Right. Um, you guys might be way too young for that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so he was the 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 doctor from like middle school, like 14 year old doctor graduated. Yeah. Even as a kid, I was like, I don't think this premise holds up, but OK. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me let you know the real deal. Doogie Hauser, uh, Michael Wynn mm -hmm. is across the street at Jabson Medical School here at University of Hawaii. And he's already a doctor and he's what, 17 years old. So we actually have the real deal. Doogie Hauser across the street for me um, anyway. So this, this thing is like that. He has all the intelligence in the world, but not enough experience that he still needs coaching from the experienced people. Mm -hmm. So the premise of that show was always he can do all these incredible things, but he's still a kid. So mom and dad, you know, friends and coworkers had to rally around him, help him out. This is yeah. where the AI model is right now. What Bloomberg is doing is working off a data set that's very specific data set. Mm -hmm. With chat GPT this is proprietary is done, stuff that only right. Bloomberg what has. chat GPT yeah. has done is comb the internet. So the reason why chat GPT is so bad at fact checking is twofold. One, it combed the internet. So it grabbed all kind mm -hmm. of crazy nonsense. But at the same token, people don't even know how to decide what's fact and fiction yet. People can be easily snowed. So there is a lot of information written by people in their brain as factual and they really really mean it we all have that one uncle or neighbor that really believes in the shadow people and slender man and whatever and i mean love them. at so best that was, i hope that's what they believe in the slender man and not other things oh yeah. man my neighbor really believes slender man is real i'm not <laughs> even joking right it's kind of a thing we crack up laughing and he always talking about the parallel universe all this other crazy stuff but he's such a genuinely nice guy mm -hmm. that we don't really make fun of him but if he had a blog and he had been writing all of this stuff down for the last 10 years that's part of the data set and the model is too young to know how to filter the difference but the model will grow up just like a, yeah. a, a teenager. I mean, so GPT-4 is really supposedly smart. better than ChatGPT, which right, is GPT-3.5, right. right? So, yes. and what what they're saying here is the Bloomberg thing. Um, I forget which version of GPT it's specifically based I think it's on. Four. It is based on four. Um, 
but it is getting better. Like the things you're talking about, Anthony, like that, that does worry me too. Like we at Engadget, um, we've, we've tested out chat GPT, uh, doing things like, Hey, br make me a table of specs comparing, you know, the iPhone 13 to the pixel seven or six or something. And sometimes those specs would be wrong for no reason. Like so it would just, it would give me wrong dimensions or wrong weight. And I'm like, where are you pulling this from? So that does kind of somebody it, like, wrote it wrong on the net. <laughs> that's, the part that's, yeah. that's the part that's crazy. Somebody actually wrote it wrong in the net. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like for instance, right when it's time to get a phone, right? That week that we're waiting, we already pre-ordered it. Let's be honest. Sure. Right. But that week that we waited, what are we doing? We're watching, you know, you guys and the, the other contemporaries, you know, being the X to our man, I was there back in the beginning. That's what we, people used to come into our content. We always blew up during phone week. Uh, what's, what's incredible to me is even then, sometimes whoever has the phone and doing the report, they get stuff wrong from a conceptual level because there's a amount of human in it. And it's not that it's a, a, a spec or something. It's the way they might look at a particular feature and maybe not fully understand it because what people don't realize about the tech people, we get a box of stuff every week. We got so many things that we're doing and you kind of mix things together. You all, Sometimes you got it in your hand for two days before Apple says, give it back. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get a chance to dig all the way deep and you get the flame wars in the comments. I can't believe you missed this. Well, you come over here and try to write seven articles in. Yeah, you can't do it all, man. With the yeah. editor barking down your neck, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if, that's why even some of the information it got itself is wrong because all of us have written something wrong in a, in a tech article at one point in time. Yeah, that, that is also, I guess, another reason not to be too afraid of any any of these like uh, generative chat bots because they're still dependent on information from us and they can't fully replace us yet, but who knows, who knows like where things will go. It feels like it is moving uh, just so quickly. And to me, that is my main concern because like guys, we, we, we have lived through the era of crypto dudes. You know, we've lived through the web three era. Um, meta is still called meta because, you know, Mark Zuckerberg really wanted to bank on the metaverse. And like, it's felt like we've had these waves of like, Oh, this is the next big thing. And, uh, hasn't really worked out well for a lot of those crowds. My fear is like, I'm looking at AI and being like, oh yeah, this, this is actually the thing. This is the thing that is, that is going to make a big impact for the way we live our lives. And we are utterly prepared for it as a society, as a, you know, the government isn't, these companies aren't, but the only thing kind of forcing this is open AI and like the, the competitive spirit, right? Everybody, everybody wants to be in on this. Otherwise they're going to be left behind. So that's why, the Microsoft thing happened so quickly. And that's why Google's being forced to push Bard out. Um, there's some good analysis from Neiman lab about the Bloomberg thing, um, kind of putting a little bit of cold water on it. Um, you know, the point is like, we're going to see a lot of these like very domain specific uses of large language models. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Adobe and Nvidia had a whole bunch of news announcing like how they were going to make it easier for other companies to kind of build their own things based on their specific knowledge. So we're going to see more of these things. We don't know how good they're going to be and their usefulness is going to depend on like the source data. Um, the Bloomberg one is interesting because it's Bloomberg. It's freaking, they have, they have like the financial data. They have so much information. Um, I've never used a Bloomberg terminal. The extent that I have seen one in action, I think is on the show industry on HBO, which is a very good show. Are you guys watching industry? Oh, no, yeah. I'm still, love, still in my succession mode. Wait, Anthony, you're not watching industry. Cause I feel like it is very much like among the things you guys would talk about <laughs> on, uh, I on feel like show. succession scratches that itch for me, but I think once succession is over, I'll catch up on industry. Yeah. So yeah, I will shut this out. Every, everybody free. knows succession is a great show. Everyone's told you to watch succession, but industry, on HBO is like, is very much like that vein. It's almost like they're in the same universe, to be honest, but it's set in London at an investment bank. And it follows a young group of bankers, like being terrible people basically. But also, um, I think there's a lot of statements on like the, the sense of the state of banking right now and the world we're in. I'm Jason Howell. What do you get your favorite geek who already has everything? Well, I know just the thing. It's a club twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news and podcasts available. And with a Club Twit subscription, they get even more. They get access to all of our podcasts ad-free, the members-only Discord, exclusive outtakes, behind the scenes, and special content, and exclusive shows like Hands on Mac, Hands on Windows, and the Untitled Linux Show. You can purchase your geek's gift at twit.tv slash clubtwit, and they're going to thank you every day for it.